What's up YouTube, this is Anthony, and I'm doing a documentary here about something that I've had in my mind for a long time. So obviously this channel is about firewood, and I incorporate the element of World War II within, but I was thinking to myself for months, how could I link these two together? Well, I found a way. I talk about firewood usage during World War II. So here we go. So I started doing a little research. There wasn't a lot of diverse information on firewood in World War II, but the little that I found was very interesting. So check out what I found while doing my research. So obviously during the war, energy was a hot commodity, and that includes gasoline, oil, coal, and also firewood. Firewood is obviously a big part of World War II, as you know there wasn't a whole gas system and you know propane and natural gas. The first thing I'm going to mention is something that's obvious that we all know that happened in World War II, and that's rationing. So I'm going to go through a bunch of countries and. You know, see what they had to list about firewood and their types of production and, uh, you know, any shortages, any surpluses, anything like that. So the first article is War History Online. Uh, the first consumer commodity item to be rationed in the U.S. was sugar. The sale of sugar ended countrywide in April 1942, which resumed on May 5th, but each person was entitled to receive only half a pound of sugar a week. This was almost half of the national consumption at the time. Coffee was rationed later, too, because Germans were attacking ships in Brazil. Later the same year, nine other items were rationed. By November 1943, the list of rationed items had grown long and included gasoline, typewriters, footwear, bicycles, fuel oil, cheese, silk, stoves, nylon, butter, margarine, milk, lard, uh, processed foods, bottled, canned, and frozen, canned milk, dried fruits, coal, and firewood, fruit, butter, jellies, and jams. Uh, from Farmer's Bulletin, number 1912, the U.S. the U.S. Department of Agriculture, July 1942, an article entitled, Wood Fuel and Nationwide Production for Victory. To provide power for manufacturing and transporting the munitions and materials necessary to defeat the enemies of the United States. To provide power for manufacturing and transporting the munitions and materials necessary to defeat the enemies of the United States and at the same time to keep homes, schools, office buildings, and thousands of new factories warm enough for health. The requirements for fuel will soon be the largest in our history. Though industrial production was then greater than ever before, the president announced in January 1942 that the armament program would be at least doubled. This called for more and more raw materials, power, and heat to process them, and fuels to generate the power and heat. Americans are not likely to suffer from lack of heat in their homes. In many parts of the country, there is ample reserve of fuel in the form of wood in the forests. In Finland, we have an article here from stat.fi, and it says, In the early days of Finnish independence, annual fellings from its forests amounted to nearly 30 million cubic meters, and over 20 million cubic meters of the total were used as firewood. During the Second World War, firewood fellings could total up to as much as 25 million cubic meters per year and neat stacks of them could still be seen throughout Finnish countryside and towns in the 1960s. Besides for heating buildings, wood was also used in steam engines and boats. Uh, this is rarehistoricalphotos.com, Finland during World War II. By means of the so-called Mati tactic, the word Mati is taken from the Finnish word for a cord of firewood. They sought to break invading columns into small segments, which were then destroyed piecemeal. The final advantage of the Finns was that their phenomenally high morale, they knew they were fighting for their national survival. And next up we have a Google article, Time of World Wars, Utrecht during the Second World War. In the autumn of 1944, the Allied troops, which were Americans, Canadians, Poles and New Zealanders together, tried to reach the northern part of the Netherlands via the bridge over the Rhine at Arnhem. The strike at Arnhem failed. The Germans made sure that there was no food or fuel to be had in the western part of the Netherlands. The last companies and even the schools closed. The collection of firewood and food was the primary activity of those who were still there. Trees and public gardens were hacked down. The foraging missions went further and further afield. In Australia, FCV supplies wartime firewood. FCV stands for Forest Commission Victoria. Over the period 1941-42 to 1952-53, a total of nearly 2 million tons measure of firewood was produced by the FCV through the Emergency Firewood Project in the late 1930s. 
In the late 1930s, the main fuel supplies for the domestic heating and cooking industry and electricity for metropolitan Melbourne and the fuel for Victoria's steam trains were mainly coal but also firewood. The state coal mine at Wantaggy, a main supplier of coal to Melbourne, suffered a violent and deadly explosion in February 15, 1937. Although output eventually resumed, it was much reduced. World War II drew large numbers of men into the services, brought about a major escalation on Australia's heavy industry output, which placed urgent demand for fuel and power and caused a reduction in the supply of black coal from both New South Wales and overseas. As a consequence, the availability of labour for the labour-intensive fuel industries reduced, and the commitment of rail rolling stock to military needs as well as the reduction in the use of road transport due to petrol shortages led to a dramatic shortage of fuel for domestic and light industry purposes. In January 1942, less than a thousand tons of firewood was coming into Melbourne each week and a survey showed that there would be a 300,000 ton shortfall. The Victorian government gave the Forestries Commission the responsibility of organizing supplementary supplies of firewood. Firewood production by the FCV reached 380,000 tons in 1942-43, to but due to transport problems caused by fuel rations, only some 253,000 tons were dispatched to Melbourne. The previous year's tally was only 15,000 tons. By the end of June 43, some 694 men, classes aliens, uh, internationals of hostile countries, part of Victoria's Civil Alien Corps, were employed in firewood cutting. They were housed in and near forested areas in 20 camps of 30 men per camp. They produced almost 150,000 tons at an average rate of 11.3 tons per man per week. In 1943 to 44, production of emergency firewood by the FCV totaled 400,000 tons. This included some purchases from the private suppliers. Firewood stocks held in the country districts amounted to 185,000 tons. Towards the end of the year, some 300 Italian POWs were employed. In 1945, bushfires spread into the Yaluren open cut mine causing further restrictions on the use of coal, such that homeowners, for instance, were only permitted to buy coal for the purpose of heating water. Because of the serious shortage of coal, fire was made available to the Victorian railways to use as a fuel for locomotives engaged in shunting and marshalling yards throughout the state. In part due to mild weather early in the winter, there was a surplus of firewood by June 1945, and because of the improvement of the supply, the FCV were requested to curtail operations. We just discussed about how there was wood-fired vehicles, so I started doing a little research on that and here's what I came up with. First off, let's just talk a little bit about gasification. Here at Wikipedia it says, gasification is a process that converts biomass or fossil fuel based carbonaceous materials into gases, including the largest fractions, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This is achieved by reacting the feedstock material at higher temperatures, typically over 700 degrees Celsius, without combustion, by controlling the amount of oxygen and or steam present in the reaction. The resulting gas mixture is called syngas from synthetic gas or producer gas, and is itself a fuel due to the flammability of the hydrogen and the carbon monoxide, of which the gas is largely composed. Power can be derived from the subsequent combustion of the resultant gas and is considered to be a source of renewable energy if the gasified compounds were obtained from biomass feedstock. So now if you take a look at a wood stove or a wood boiler, so you have your fire burning at the base of the wood stove, not only is smoke and steam going up the chimney, it's also a gas too. So you see this baffle plate here, that's where the secondary burn happens and that's where the gases are burnt off up there. So your wood stove should have a baffle plate even if you have one that's homemade. It's good to have one there because you get that extra heat from that burn. Buildgasifier.com is a report about gasification using firewood as fuel. This report is one in a series of emergency technology assessments sponsored by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The purpose of this report is to develop detailed, illustrated instructions for the fabrication, installation, and the operation of a biomass gas fire unit. This report attempts to preserve the knowledge about wood gasification that was put into practical use during World War II. In this report, detailed step-by-step -step procedures are presented for constructing 
a simplified version of the World War II wood gas generator. A catastrophic event could disrupt the supply of petroleum in this country so severely that this technology might be critical in meeting the energy needs of some essential economic activities, such as the production and distribution of food. In occupied Denmark during World War II, 90% of all mobile farm machinery, tractors, trucks, stationary engines, and fishing and ferry boats were powered by wood gas generator units. Even in neutral Sweden, 40% of all motor traffic operated on gas derived from wood or charcoal. All over Europe, Asia, and Australia, millions of gas generators were in operation between 1940 and 1946. During World War II, gasoline was rationed and in short supply. Due to the lack of gasoline from petroleum, older people recalled how to build gasifiers for both wood and coal and how to convert internal combustion engines to run on gaseous fuel and wood gas generators were in active production. In Great Britain, France, the United States, and Germany, large numbers of such generators were constructed or improvised to convert wood and coal into fuel for vehicles. Commercial generators were in production before and after the war for use in special circumstances or in distressed economies. Some of the World War II era gas generators were of the Imbert downdraft type, designed around 1920 by French inventor Georges Imbert. Germany produced gasogene for vehicles including cars, trucks, artillery, tractors, and even tanks to preserve the limited supplies of fuel. Even in non-combatant countries such as Sweden or Brazil, gasogene was popular. As oil became hard to obtain in Brazil, a racer named Chico Landi won a Sao Paulo's Interiago circuit in 1944, driving a wood gas-powered Alfa Romeo. Wow. Coal-based town gas production was generally displaced by petroleum gas and natural gas. However, Great Britain continued her use of coal-based town gas until the North Sea natural gas discoveries in the 1960s and 70s. Okay, and here's two interesting articles. At Newser.com, Austrian police investigating a grenade blast were less puzzled by the explosion and more by where it took place inside a wood stove that appeared to be containing nothing but firewood. A police spokeswoman said yesterday a World War II grenade apparently landed in a tree during fighting. It was then enveloped by wood growing around it to the point that it was invisible when the tree was chopped down for firewood and sold in the supermarket where the identified 22-year-old woman bought it. The blast Sunday in the lakeside town of Gmunden shattered the stove's glass panel, but the sturdy wrought iron stove prevented injuries. And another one here at www2f.com. This happened in Bielefeld, Germany. Police blame a discarded Second World War bullet Friday from an explosion in a log fire, which injured an elderly couple as they sat at home. Okay, so that sums up this video, and I found it very interesting that they had the wood-fired cars in World War II. You know, I'm quite a historian on that subject, and I didn't realize that they had those during that time, or that they existed at all. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Every now and then I do some firewood splitting story times during my splitting sessions. And I'm going to incorporate some of the World War II history in that. And I'm going to discuss certain events in World War II. And the next idea that I have is how exactly Hitler came into power and how did he achieve the successes that he did. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and future videos. Like, subscribe, share, comment, and all that good stuff. Hey!